So we're looking at this thing today, which is a decade capacitor. It's quite a nice one, it's quite old. Now I've already done a bit of an overview on this thing when I got it on the mailbag. I showed it in mailbag and I did do some testing on it to make sure all the switches work, which are really nice switches actually. They're really, really nice positive switches, they feel quite good. I think there's like a slight bend on this post here, things like that. It's not really much. There's a dent in the chassis here. Got this weirdness here with these little posts on the top which are different. I think that's been remanufactured by someone and put on. Got missing foot. So I want to pull this thing apart, have a look inside it. We'll see what's inside it for a start. It's a good exploration and see how's it constructed, how they've done this decade capacitor setup. Whilst it's apart, I will try and fix this dent and fix the foot and that sort of stuff. It's a little cosmetic stuff, but say functionally it does actually work, which is always nice. So the first thing we've got to figure out how to do is get into it. It's got screws front and back. I think I'll take the front ones off because I'm thinking this whole panel will just come out the casing. That's what I'm suspecting. So we'll take these front screws out and see what happens, see if the whole panel comes out. I could be wrong about that, but if not, we'll just pull some more screws out until it falls apart. Or I should probably do this too. It's always a capacitor. Seeing as it is a capacitor box we're working on. Which I might stick this on his back and unscrew these. Might make more sense. This when the box fall out inside and it all goes falls apart and goes horribly wrong. Hey look at that, that was a good guess wasn't it? I was right, it does just come out the front panel. Let's have a closer look. It's got styrene caps in it. Interesting. Those micas are they? I don't think they're micas are they? Can I recognise those caps? Know what they're called? Comments down below. We've got these ones here too, some more polys. Interesting construction isn't it? Very simple. Very tidy. Extremely tidy construction. And obviously here we've got a variable capacitor, which is what this front one is. It's a variable. Air gap. It's an air capacitor. Which is how you get these really small values. So basically you've got this post here goes through to this, this line, which comes along and it's in parallel with each switch. It's a capacitor, don't forget. So capacitors work in parallel. Whereas if it was a resistor, obviously you'd be in series. So it's capacitor, so parallel what it is. And the second post comes up. I'm trying not to touch anything in here. And does the same. Goes across and is in parallel all the switches. And then this air capacitor is actually going onto this board here. And interesting that each one has only got five capacitors for a decade. And they've actually got the same board used on all of them, it's the same circuit board. The ones down this end are different. It's a different circuit board, but these are all exactly the same board, they just populated them differently. Universal boards, nice and simple, cheap, nice design. That's really clean in it looks really good. It's nice. Now what I might do is put some oil on these switches on the actual mechanisms of them to make keep them all nice so they don't end up wearing away the metal do a bit of maintenance on that It was working fine, I had no reason to actually do anything with it apart from just a bit of maintenance really I mean, the actual switches themselves, the contacts are working fine There was no signs of dirty contacts when I was trying it out before The actual mechanisms can probably use a bit of mechanical wear and tear care you know. Now that is actually a roller, it is a roller, that's nice I'll show you that. So there's the switch mechanism there, the detent. You can see that it's actually got a roller in there. But you can see it's slipping. See that? So it's not rolling the entire time. So that definitely needs a bit of care there. That needs a bit of a clean up, a bit of oiling. I'll probably put a bit of oil on there. Now that's actually got like a plastic housing around it. So maybe oil isn't the best choice. Obviously oil is the best for between the roller and the cam it's on, which is basically a disc with holes in it, right? That's what's doing the detents. So that's always best for that, but silicon's probably best for the plastic part. Hmm, which one to use? So I decided to spray some oil in here, because it's mostly metal mechanics. Oh, that went everywhere. Way more than I wanted. Try and get onto the rollers. I think it's mostly metal to metal contact, and this plastic is just a holder there. Hopefully this is okay. <laughs> um, some plastics don't like getting oily. These look like they're nylon, so they should be kind of okay. Hopefully. Or I'm just ruining it right now. Hopefully I'm not ruining it. But also I'm going to put some on the actual... Um, just put in there too. Just trying to put the smallest little bit in there, just to lubricate everything. This lasted all this time, however many years it's been. I mean, it would be nice to find a day code in Maybe run somewhere. So I want to make sure it keeps lasting a further period of time. You know, a little bit of oil can save it an awful lot of wear. 
Let's just check if this is still rotating properly now or not. See if it's fixed the problem. So before this was not turning properly. It was binding halfway around. Yeah, it's looking good now. Yep, that's now turning, so that's in like a roller, which is what it should be doing. Great. It actually be good for another 20 years now, hopefully. So I'm just looking at this handle over here, and I notice it's actually not straight. So I'm just going to try unscrewing the screw and see what happens to the screw. Yep, the screw is, look at it, it's wobbling everywhere. This is an example of where I need to zoom in more. So here's the screw, and it's wobbling everywhere as I'm unscrewing it. See this? Yeah, it's it's slightly bent, isn't it? You think it's all right or not? You reckon? Yeah, it's fine. Look, nothing wrong with that. They make them that way, don't they? So I just want to found some more bolts for these. These are M4s. That will fit in there quite nicely. That's all good now. That's all bent before, so no, it's not bent. I've got to change the bottom one as well. See, these are hexagonal instead of a slot, so it's not quite original. Doesn't quite match original, but it'll have to do. It's better than having a bent and potentially kind of fall off because the screws have been stressed. I'm trying to get this one out, stop this one too. Bit more of an acute angle on that one. That's pretty bad. At least this handle will be straight. So I'm looking to see how to get the casing apart to see how to fix this awful dent on it. The top is stoved in very slightly as well. It's like caved in. So I want to see it's caved in here a little bit. It's held together by clips. So it looks like I've got to take all these clips off to get it apart. 14 clips, I think, to get the top cover off. That's what it looks like. That's fun. I suppose I'll just show you how to get these clips off. So I've leave it out on this edge here to get it moving. Now I've got a gap down the back. Shall we drive down the back of that and lever it out? Now I'm trying to spin it rather than drag because I'm trying to reduce the chance of damaging the little pins on here which lock in. See those little fingers there which lock in? I'm trying to not damage those if I can. All right, so that's why I'm trying to spin it more than anything else. So it's go all the sideways movement on the pulling movement. That's the target anyway, to try and reduce the chance of damaging them. So they still work when I put it back together again. I don't know, only about 50 more to go. Because this has got these bezels on the front which are actually recessed and the casing goes into them, both sides, it's like a lip it goes inside. To get this out, I can't just undo the clips from both sides and then lift it off, it doesn't work like that. I have to separate them as well, which means I have to also then take off the clips on one of the bottom halves. I'm thinking the best way of doing it is actually to try and mirror it, so I've done all the top side here, I've also got to do the ones that go down as joints down here, in the centres, on both sides. But if I then take this rear panel off here and do the bottom one this side, it will be like a mirror effect. I'm going to take each half apart from each other with a bezel on each half. And that way I've actually got to take off lift clips. So I'm the truth, does it come apart? It does, look at that. That is an awful lot of effort. Way more effort than I wanted it to be. But we got there. So now looking at these feet, the top cover's done. That's as straight as we're going to get it. Pretty happy with it. Shame about the paint, you know, on that corner being damaged, but that's all there is. But these all split, these feet, so that's split. This one's split, this one's split as well. well I saw that one's not split. Just these two are split. Obviously, this front one had split, because that's why it's gone. I've got some feet here somewhere. Worst case, if I don't have ones which fit properly, I could always 3D print some. It's not a big deal. I've done that before, 3D printed feet. So I've already got a design I could use, actually. But I'm pretty sure I've got some feet. So I've got some feet. I've got some smaller ones to go on the rear, which are for these ones which are splitting and breaking. And I've got these ones to put on the bottom. So we've got feet. Need to buy some more now. All right, so that's the bottom feet replaced. That's all those on there now. And it doesn't wobble, which is the important thing. Wobbling is always really annoying. If it wobbles, it means the chassis is bent, which is also possible. I've come across that plenty of times. So I'm trying to put it back together and trying to figure out why I'm in trouble getting these clips on. Turns out there's two different types of clip, which I hadn't noticed. There's a wide one and a narrow one. See the difference there? So the wide one's off the face here, narrow ones will be down for the sides. Yeah. So I'm replacing his feet on the back right now, and the worst bit about this is trying to get the bolts through the things. They fit, but they're tight, and you've got to get them out the old ones first, and then screw them into the new ones. And it's a really long bolt, and it's taking forever. And then I've got spacers I have to put on, 
still go through there and I'm trying to be clever about this I put the spacer on here I'm going to do that with all four that I can sit the chassis on top of it instead of trying to put each bolt in and line the spacers get the washers on I can put the whole thing in one go hopefully it might work and then I just got to put the washers on and put the nuts on and, and I'll do it up and hopefully it'll work um, I could be proved wrong but the hardest bit is like these things because these are just a pain I undo that thing and put it in the next one do it back up again because the holes are the same size as the threads alright that's all the spacers fed on let's see if my theory is correct that I can just get this and drop it on and have it fit alright that's all the bolts in until I lifted it up let's put the other washer on it's got another washer which needs to drop in which is here somewhere there it is and then these little lock washers and then I can get in here with the driver the driver and do them up and we should be good I'm going to put some Noctite on these now I've already put the, the back feet on the, the back feet on there now all attached that's all worked I'm going to put this on what I really should have done is put some of this on before I put the nuts on if I was being sensible but what I'm going to do because the threads are actually sticking out I don't even see it in there probably can't see it but the threads are sticking out on those nuts see the threads are sticking out there so I'm going to put some on those and that will hold them in now unfortunately the ones for the feet the bottom feet they don't have that luxury they're a bit short really but I couldn't really do it much more hopefully I'll get down there and lock them so they don't fall off I mean the chance of these coming loose anyway is not exactly high but you don't want it falling apart inside the casing and rattling around and causing problems later on so it's just a bit of insurance of course if anyone has tried to get this thing apart in the future it could have a bit of a problem but uh, hopefully that's not me well it probably will be me <laughs> hopefully I don't have that problem hopefully I don't have to pull this apart again also running down the side to help attach it to the chassis as well just in case the nut does not stick to the thread really you should put this on the threads before you put the nut on and that's not what I've done we can put the front panel back on whilst it's like this and I think we're just about done with this unit then right let's put this thing back in again now let's slide it in and we get the original screws not going to do them up until I actually get the thing fully in it's always the way you do this thing is you uh, get the things partially in there actually I'll stick on this back it goes a lot better that way Ouch, I've got metal splinter. <laughs> I just pushed it into my finger some more. <laughs> now when I was looking at this thing before, I don't know if I mentioned it on camera or not, but it looks like it's bowed. Now I can actually see it now. This is bowed. You can actually see it against the chassis. Whereas this end is you, know, you can see, it, see the gap there and that blank at the back. When you come across it comes up proud and goes back down again on that side, which you can't quite see because I'm out of shot. Here we go, just over there. So you can push this. You know, from chase. Yeah, it's pushing down so it's definitely bowed slightly it's not enough to worry bother me that much it's just a minor thing anyway that's there so that's not wobbling that's all good that way only wobbles back to front that's fine it's all straight the chassis is all straight a lot better than it was before it's not perfect but it's way better than it was see before that's all bent in and caved in now look at that it's looking much better the corner's not perfect but it's not bad not bad for someone that's not a panel beater. So there you go, that's that done. Happy with that. That's that piece of equipment refurbished to a point where I'm happy with it. I mean, it's just new feet really, it's what we did and panel beat a little bit. I know it works. Um, at least now I've lubricated the switches a little bit, you know, the actual me mechanical part of the switch. The contacts were fine, I had no issues with contacts, so I wasn't at all worried about doing those. That's good, I'm happy with that. So I'll do this. I mean, I'd like to have this in this room as one of my bits of test gear I have in this room for doing checks and things. Uh, I haven't checked the accuracy of these yet. Like I said before, I'm going to sit down and actually check the accuracy of each digit and each decimal so I know what they're actually like, accuracy I need to check and see how much I can use this as a reference standard really whether I can do that as a reference or not, I don't know um, I do have another piece of gear which is supposed to be a reference standard that's what I want to work on next if I can this is a nice compact unit so I'd like to actually have this in here as something I can use it's pretty good, it's nice, it's a very nice piece of gear subscribe up there if you're not already subscribed Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy a bit of gear like this to fix or well, more complicated bits of gear than this to fix I don't know and other links down there for other stuff you can watch other videos stuff in the description playlists what have you electronics repair reviews whatever here's love